Now, we have the great honor and pleasure of Sandra Smith, <laughs> co-anchor of America Reports on Fox News. You know what? My message is pick up a rake. Did you see what happened at the White House this morning? One of their, one of their green policy initiative reporters was, was, was on a hit on CNBC, I think, talking to your friend Kernan uh, and Becky Quick. In the morning. And nobody could hear her over, hear oh, her over the, the gas-powered leaf blowers behind her at the White House. I mean, <laughs> can we start at home? I mean, there are electric leaf blowers. There are rakes. Hello. There's also Curtin, who's a nice fellow. I want to give Joe a shout-out. He out. said, oh, He's maybe. The, I, I, think, I think Becky tried to give her an out. Oh, maybe they're electric. No answer from the Green Policy Inif Initiative person standing on the I want to talk to you about House. other wonderful and strange things in Washington. But in all seriousness, you read uh, the editorial today in the Wall Street Journal, and you hear what Bill Bennett has to say and many others. And once again, the Biden administration is providing more welfare without workfare. And I just think that's the They lowest. want you hooked on big government, that's right. period. Yeah. And in, an, in a time and era of 40-year high inflation that we are all suffering through, they're talking about more spending. Pay-fors? Are you kidding me? Don't you love that? Have you ever heard that from this Did administration you, Hang once? on. You recall the word pay for. I do, which is, of course. It's in but I learned your from vocabulary. you, Larry. So the most recent person I've heard even <laughs> say the phrase is you. Um, no, I mean, it, it, it's absurd. Now, the other thing about inflation is Janet Yellen now, and the New York Times, bless their hearts, just published a headline saying all these people who, who forecast inflation wrong are now telling us it's, it's, it's going to go down in the new year. Are we supposed to believe Wait, that? hang on. That's the headline. We have the quote to end all quotes. Here is <laughs> Janet Yellen on 60 Minutes. At CBS Here yesterday. Here it comes. Get ready. I believe inflation will be lower. Um, I am very hopeful that the labor market will uh, remain quite healthy uh, so that people can feel good about their finances and their personal economic situation. There's a risk of recession, but um, it certainly isn't, in my view, something that is necessary to bring inflation down. Says the woman says the woman who first told us there was no inflation. You were saying <laughs> <laughs> And then and then when that wasn't exactly panning out, uh, then she said that it was transitory inflation that exactly uh, did not exactly pan out um, and then she stood up you'll remember and she apologized for getting it so wrong so I don't know how much weight you're going to put in her words but nowhere in there did I say we are going to curb the spending mm. the massive government Good spending right. that has gotten us here right. and go out to dinner uh, go to the stores go go to, to to the everyday stores American people are shopping at right now I don't see any signs of prices coming down. If anything, maybe they're shrinking packaging still or what a shrinkflation. Prices are still sky high, and that is hurting American families every day. By the way, our friend uh, John Carney from Breitbart makes a really interesting point. There has been some moderation in the peak inflation rate. I mean, we're not running at 9 or 10 percent. Energy prices have come down for sure. Yes, indeed. But, 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 what you're seeing now is a kind of plateauing mm -hmm. of 5 or 6%. Each month you're getting 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We'll probably see it again in the CPI 0. coming 3 out is tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, the now casting from the Cleveland Fed has got it at 0. 0.5. That's uh, over 6% at an annual rate. In other words, the point is we're no longer seeing declining inflation. We're seeing plateauing of inflation at twice the rate of the Fed's 2% target. Doesn't make me feel any better. Right. I've okay, so 0.3% tomorrow would be 6.1% annual year over year. Year on year. Yeah. I mean, you're still, you're, it, it's still up there. That's going to be the last read on inflation um, for, the, for the end of the year. Um, I, I talked to Charles Payne earlier, our good buddy, colleague here. He yep. says he believes it's a make-or-break moment for the markets. Uh, there's going to be a lot of weight put in that inflation report. Uh, inflation is still out there. People are paying the price for it. And if you look at energy prices coming down, that's great. That's, de that's de ultimately demand destruction. This is what the Fed was seeking by raising interest rates. Uh, it's harder and harder for people to get into a home right now. Their interest rates have gone up. Their credit card bills have gone up. Their car payments have gone up. Uh, just about everything <laughs> has gone up. So enjoy the cheaper gas prices, but you're paying a lot more for everything else. I mean, you're paying for this government's mistake of outspending 
uh, and driving inflation higher. To so I point. wanted to focus in on your favorite Treasury Secretary once again. Oh, please and do. 60 Minutes interview. She said we're not going to have a recession. Mm. But she also says there's no need to have a recession to bring inflation down, which is a shot, a jab at Jay Powell, who has basically said he doesn't care about recession, he doesn't care about soft landing, all he cares about is the Fed's 2% target. Do I see discord in no the, pressure there, in right? The palace. Do I see any <laughs> discord in the palace? I don't know, but I do think she's probably saying he can avoid a recession, right? He can raise interest rates to a point where it's not going to drive us into, you know, a prolonged economic downturn. I believe you believe that to be the case as well, that even if we enter a recession, it's not going to be a deep one. Not yet. Did I get that wrong? Not yet. No, no. Except the only thing that bothers me on that point is this lame duck spending right. bonanza. Yep which could add another $2 trillion to spending, which was the inflationary forces in the first place that forced the Fed into doing what the Fed does, does best, which is print money. I'm just saying Look, there's been no consequences. There. I mean, they, look what just happened in the midterm elections. The, the, the Democrats basically wanted these high prices to happen. They happened. Uh, they were unapologetic for them, blamed everything but their own policies for why we got here. And then there was no consequences in the midterm elections. I mean, they, you know, obviously bit. Republicans flipped the House. Bit. I got it, I got bit. it, I got it. Um, but I don't see them paying a huge price for, for what has happened. And Brian that's my Moynihan. Point. Oh, okay. Bank of America chair. If Think you want to dodge, if you want to dodge this, feel free. But he is. <laughs> I have a feeling I might want to. I know the guy. I've known him for many, many years. Uh -huh. uh, he is being rumored as the replacement for Janet Yellen. Just a thought. Brian Moynihan, B of A. May I flip I, this interview around and ask you your thoughts? I see a dodge. We could say, talk about Joe Kernan, my conservative <laughs> friend, from another network. You were going to ask me about this breakthrough from scientists, which I thought was fascinating. All right, let's talk about fission versus fusion. And it's a much better subject than I'm Brian wondering Moynihan. what your thought is, because I reached out to our mutual friend Bjorn Lomborg on it. You I was did? So, I was so you curious. Did? I did, because I know you say? love him, too. And he I writes do. for The Wall Street Journal. I do. And he always gives it like it, you know, tells us exactly the way he sees things. He said, and Larry, this is just for your show, this could be huge. He says it is hard to tell now and it will still likely take a couple of decades before this power source could come through for mankind. But the underlying story is potentially even bigger. He said if we're on the verge of discovering cheap, clean energy, what will happen with the trillions we've invested in poorly performing, unreliable, clean energy today? I love that. I think that's terrific. Um, a very good friend of mine who's a policy wonk in the energy field, talking to him about this fission versus fusion stuff, um, he was saying to me, we've been talking about, uh, we've been talking about fusion, is that right? Mm -hmm. Fusion. Yeah. Not fission. Fission is you break fusion. the atom. Fusion is you put the atoms together and they produce energy. Right? That powers the sun. Okay. And they've never been able to go beyond that, what we've they put in to get out. We've been talking about breakthroughs in this, in the next couple of decades for 65 years. That's true. Fact. So I don't know that Since we need to hold our breath on this. You I mean, You're we want to do it. it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, this is one of these terrific ideas. Uh, the announcement's coming from the Lawrence Livermore Tomorrow. Laboratory, which yeah. is a very big Jen deal. Jen Granholm's going to deliver this. I am this all for that. Major scientific breakthrough. It's, it's being just built. that in the meantime, can we open the oil and gas biggest so we have some Amen. energy and some electricity? Amen. And by the way, the, have you seen the pictures? They're going to come up later in the show with senators. Have you seen the pictures of the new? Uh, stealth bomber. No. It's just a monster, monster airplane, the new stealth bomber. Okay. okay. Oh, wait, for several weeks ago. This isn't new. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't use uh, fossil fuels oh, to yeah. power. It's going to have to be done by these little Bingo. AAA flashlight batteries, <laughs> the new stealth bomber. Uh, but I'm all for fission. I might even, I'm for fusion and fission. You are cracking me up. Here's your picture, by the way. I'm for there, look at that. Is that the biggest mother of a plane you've chills. ever seen? It yeah. can drop nukes. It can do anything you want. But it has to be powered by windmills. 
<laughs> according to the climate restrictions. I think we've gone off the rails here. Uh, we've gone completely <laughs> off the rails. We started this segment with Brian Moynihan. No, no, we started this segment with work effort. Anyway, you can catch much more of this, Sandra, <laughs> <laughs> on America Reports. It's I been even, one of those days. I yeah. even show up there from time to time. Anyway, it's 1 to 3 p.m. every single day on Fox News. We love having you. And it you. is terrific. And we love having Sandra. Thank you.